Hey guys, welcome to Eagle Life Church, Church at Home. This is Pastor Brad Murphy. We're so glad that you joined us online today. Church at Home is a lot like church at church, but a tiny bit different. There's some things that'll be exactly the same. You can sing along, you can read scripture, you can raise your hands, but there's some other things that are a little bit different. Your living room is now the worship center. Your television screen, tablet, or phone is now the stage, but your God is still God, your Savior is still Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is still your comforter. There are some things that are also different. You can't give me a hug or say hi or let me know how your week went, so please use the comments below to share how you're doing. If something happens in the service that gets you excited, share an emoji so others know how you feel. Or you can DM a friend who's mentioned something in the comments and check out how their week's been. Please also, we want you to text CHECK to 352-6002 so that we know you and your family have joined us today. We hope that Church at Home helps you experience Jesus in a life-changing way. Hi there, Eagle Life Church. Thank you for tuning in today. And on those of you joining us out in the community, we're so glad that you are with us for Church at Home. As we start today's service, we want to read some scripture that will establish where it is that we're headed and what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. So I invite you to read this scripture with me from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. The words are going to be on the screen. Lift up your voice. Read these out loud right there in your home, in your bedroom, or in the car. Let's begin Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Isn't that such a great scripture for us to start today? Whatever you're going through, the river, whether you're going through the fire, whether you're walking through the waters, God is with you. He's right there by you, and he's called you by name. That's his word for you today. So let's pray as we begin this service and then our worship team is gonna lead us in song. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that's true. We thank you that you are with us, that you're right there beside us and that whatever we're going through, that you have promised to be right beside us. So God, we give our worship to you. We give you our praise because we know that you are Emmanuel, God with us. And we sing out hallelujah to the name that's above every name. Church, raise your voices with us as we stand and proclaim today that no matter what enemy we face, our God, our King is bigger, stronger, mightier. He is our King. Raise your voices. Raise a hallelujah today as we proclaim this together.
you are our Savior. You've come today and every day to be near to us. You are always with us. We praise you. We thank you. We love you, oh God. We lift our voices this morning. You've come to bring peace, to be love, to be nearer to us. So you've come to bring life, to be light, to shine bright.
thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Thank you for being a part of this. And um, I want to invite you to pray with me. Um, so would you just join me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you that you are with us, that you have promised to be here wherever we are, that you would be there, whether it's in our living room or at the worship center at church, you have promised to be with your people and we thank you for your presence. And Lord, there are some prayer needs that we wanna pray for and we just ask you to meet all these needs according to your riches and glory. God, that these needs would um, be heard from heaven. Jesus, that you would reach down from heaven and touch the hearts of your people, that they would be known by you, that they would experience your joy and your touch. So congregation, we want to put these prayer needs um, up on the screen so that you can see what's going on. And we want to invite you to pray right there in your living room. We want to invite you to pray for each of these needs and just f pick someone in your family to pray for each one and spend a moment um, praying for them. And we're gonna just have that be full screen so that you can um, pray for them there in your home. And so do that now, okay? Thank you so much, Eagle Life Church. Thank you, friends, uh, for joining us and for praying. We're so glad that you're with us this morning and that you took that time to pray for those uh, needs that were on the screen. So I want to send a special message to our kids. And so if we have any kids that are watching at home or with you, grab them and tell them that Pastor Brad wants to talk to them. Say, hey, kids, kids, come on. I want you to get up. Now, normally when we're meeting together, our kids join us up at the front of the room. And so we can't do that here in the worship center today, but we still want you kids to come right up to the TV. And um, I want to send a special greeting to you every week during church at home. So last week we shared a high five and some of you posted pictures and tagged Eagle Life Church. Really appreciate you doing that. That was a lot of fun. It's good to share those memories and see you guys uh, interacting with us. But today I want to do something Big Hero 6 style. Last week we did a high five, but this week I want to get a fist bump. Now, do you remember this in Big Hero 6? They did the fist bump and then he went. Blah, 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 blah. So I want to get some good pictures and video of you doing this with me, kids. So get your fist ready and then we're going to fist bump and do a blah, 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 when we're done. All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Give me a fist bump. Pound it. Come on, everybody. Pound it. And then we're going to get a little bit of. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Thank you, kids. Now, don't run off. Don't run off yet because we have something special that we want you to participate in. And Pastor Lori is going to tell you about that because we want you to run off in just a second, but with a plan. Yeah, so here's the plan. This is what you need to do. I'd like you to go find an object that represents your name. So maybe you have a stuffed animal that has your name on it, or maybe you have something that represents like who you are, what's special about you. Go find that object. And then what I want you to do is post a comment in the comments bars here and so that we can look at it later and see what kind of objects you grabbed to represent your name. So go find it. And we're going to be sharing those items in just a few moments uh, during Church at Home. So please make sure you do that. And if you want to post a picture, you can do that, but just not in the comments here. So go over to the East Eagle Life Church page. You can post it there or on your own um, Facebook page and then just tag your location at Eagle Life Church or you can at us and that will add you to there. Yes. Yeah, well, we will also want to receive our offering today. And we're gonna do that a little bit different than we have before, but we have some online giving options for you. So there's a couple ways that you can do that. The first one is that you can text the word give to 352-6002 
and then that will send you a link that you can launch that will get you into the giving process. Just make sure that when you get to the end of that process that you hit submit and then check your email for a confirmation uh, so that you can confirm that you are the person who owns that phone number and that email. So make sure you confirm that. You can also give online at eaglelifechurch.org and just click the box give. Or you can send a check through the post office and you use one of those sticky things that you put on an envelope. Um, and it's kind of an old-fashioned way of getting thing? a stamp. Yes, yeah, that's what it's go. called. Uh, it's kind of an old-fashioned way of doing it, but we would love for you to get a check sent. You also can set up online bill pay with your own bank and use that address to get your giving to the church during this time. Well, we also have some other things. Yes, life groups are going to be meeting virtually until we decide otherwise, well, until the regulations change. And so we have some important information for you for the groups that are happening this week. Yeah, that's right. Our youth are going to be meeting this week. And rather than meeting on Sunday nights, our youth are now meeting on Thursday nights. So you can meet with us Sunday morning during church at home and then have youth group interaction on Thursday nights. Pastor Laura used Teams uh, to do that video conference last week. We may be trying to use Zoom this Thursday, but check it out. Make sure you join the group by texting youth to 352 so that Pastor Laura can send that link to you. And then we also have Miss Samantha Williams, who is going to be joining us. And we've got her live on video, I think. So I'm giving her a call. Let's see if we can get Miss Williams on the line. Mrs. Williams, are you there? Let's see if we can get her. I'm trying to ring her up, see if we can get her on the phone. Mrs. Williams, have we got you? Ah, there, there she, she is. is. Hi, Mrs. Williams. Uh, can you share with the kids what's going to be happening uh, for them after today's live stream? So excited about. And we are going to be discussing joy, our new study from the book of Philippians. We are on... Um, episodes one and two in our right now media content and it's just going to be a blast we get to connect we get to have fun we get to chat and we get to be silly and i'm excited so i can't wait to see you there after. thank you mrs williams bye we'll see you afterwards on uh, marco polo well, we also have some other activities happening. And yes, what's going I'll on speak with the on ladies? our ladies group. So our Thursday book club is still happening via Zoom. We had a blast last Thursday. So if you don't normally come on Thursdays and want to be part of that, sign up because we had so much fun. Um, it'll be via Zoom. I'll send out an email with an ID and a, and a um, password for you. Same thing with Ladies Coffee Talk on Saturday. Sign up for that group and we'll still have our Coffee Talk on Saturday just via um, Zoom. That's awesome. And our men are also going to be meeting. We uh, won't be having breakfast at the church, so you're going to have to cook your own eggs and pancake, or maybe you might be able to convince someone else in your house to do it. But we're going to meet at 8 o'clock on the 11th, so please make sure you join that group. Text men's breakfast to 352 so that we send you the link so that you can sign up and be a part of that. And then we also have a brand new Bible study. Very exciting. Yeah, this is going to be this exciting. Cool. It's happening on Tuesdays via Zoom. And Pastor John Wilkie, one of the elders here at Eagle Life Church, he is going to be sharing on the end times. And some people have asked me, do you think this is the end times? <laughs> is that why we're having these quarantines and all this other stuff? And, you know, the Bible says that in the ends there will be famines and pestilence, storms and earthquakes. And so this would be a great time to jump in on that class. Make sure that you join the end times group by texting end times to 352-6002. And you can hop into that Zoom uh, meeting that will be on Tuesday nights. I'd also like to remind you about Right Now Media. This is a resource that's kind of like Netflix with tons of Bible studies and seminars and all sorts of kids um, information too. It's free. It's something that our church has done so that all of us can be part of it. So sign up for that. You can see that on the um, Right Now. You can text Right Now to 352-6002 and it'll give you all the information you need to sign up for that website. Yeah, that's awesome. And there's also a link on our website uh, right there at the top of the page for Right Now Media. So check that out. We also have some news about Easter. So it sounds like with the governor's new declaration of a 21-day quarantine that that's going to extend past Easter. So it's going to be hard for us to have our typical Easter celebration and meet here in the building and have the egg hunt and the art show and the desserts and all that. So what we're planning on doing is we're still going to celebrate the resurrection on April 12th, and we have a special message for all of you about God's love and how deep and wide and high and long that is. So 
God loves you this much is the message that we're gonna be sharing. So just like you're watching Church at Home today on Facebook, we're gonna have that service on Easter Sunday available to be watched at home. So please engage with us, join that service, participate as much as you can, share the love that God has for you with other people by sharing uh, about God loves you this much Easter celebration. But what about the egg hunt? I know. What about the bouncers? What are we gonna do? We're gonna have to figure that out. Just have to wait and see. Yeah, so we're gonna wait and see, but what we're thinking, and you can pray with us about this, is that the first Sunday that we can all be back together, we're gonna throw a big party. And we're gonna put all of our effort into that celebration. And let's see if we can fill this place. People are gonna be excited to get out and they can come and hear a message of hope here at Eagle Life Church and know that God is for them. Yes, there's, there's a lot of changes that have been happening. Thank you for being so patient and so um, understanding of all of it. But you can stay informed if you like our Facebook page because we'll be posting information there. And then also the Eagle Life Church webpage would be a great resource for you as well. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Pastor Lori. And thank you, church, for participating. Make sure you uh, get connected to all those activities through Facebook and online. Well, I uh, wanted to transition now to our topic this morning. We're gonna be looking at Romans chapter 16. So if you have a Bible, make sure that you get it turned there. Um, And the kids, earlier we asked you to get something that represents who you are and what your name is. And so I wanna ask, did anybody post anything on there? Yeah, I'm having a little bit of a hard time finding the feed. So maybe it's just my tablet or maybe it's something else. But if you don't have something yet, go get it and post it in the comments so that we can see what you have. That's awesome. Well, I want to share with you about my name. My name is Brad. And Brad is something that you use in school. Maybe you used a Brad in crafts or uh, in art and crafts at school. I remember when I was a kid, I made a clock that had two hands on it so that I could learn how to tell the time. And we pinned that, the arms of that clock to the paper right in the center with a Brad. It was a brass nail with a big head in the back of it split. And so my name, Brad, is a big nail, or sorry, a A small small nail nail. with a big head. (laughs) And some people say that that also describes me. Um, But I don't know. I hopefully don't exhibit those kind of (laughs) characteristics in my personality and character. Um, Now, another thing that happens with my name is that my name's Brad, and I introduce myself as Brad, but for whatever reason, people always want my name to be something more. So they want to call me Bradford or they want to add a Lee at the end of my name and call me Bradley. But what's the problem with Bradley? The reason that Bradley doesn't work is because my mother gave me the middle name Lindley. So it'd be Bradley Lindley Murphy. Yeah. That doesn't work so great. (laughs) No, that isn't very good. And it would be pretty embarrassing uh, to have my name rhyme itself, Bradley Lindley Murphy. So please don't call me Bradley, just call me Brad. And now I've shared my middle name with all of you, so I'm probably gonna live to regret that. (laughs) Well, I wanted to tell you, I can see some things now. So Amaya got a mug with her name on it, so that's pretty cool. Avery got a flamingo that has the same birthday as her. That's exciting. August got a calendar. Isaiah and Elena grabbed their basketballs with their names on it. Lots of cool things with names on it. Yes, good job, kids. Thank you for sharing that. And parents, if you could get a picture of your kid with that item and then tag Eagle Life Church so that we can see that this week and maybe we'll share some of those on our Instagram. Yeah, we could do that with the pre-service next week. That'd be fun. Ooh. Okay, so here's the next question. Okay, So they did their object, next? but now here's what I want you to do. And this is for everyone, not just the kids. So I'd like you to share an emoji. Brad has, you know, he has Lindley, so he might have, I don't know, what kind of emoji would you do for that? Uh... I might put a girl emoji because I feel like my middle name is like a girl's name, Lindley. Okay, so you go ahead and share an emoji of how you feel about your middle name. And if you're brave, you could even post what your middle name is so that we can see that. And I'll look for those comments down here. Okay, and maybe a little bit later, we'll share some of those with everybody else. So why are we talking about names? Why are we interested in what our name is? Well, when we get to chapter 16 in the book of Romans, and we've been studying this passage for a few weeks now, Uh, Paul is coming to the end of this letter that he sent to the church in Rome. And the church in Rome was made up of a variety of different people, and Paul had yet to visit them. And so he was writing this letter to tell them about the faith, to encourage them, to spur them on to good works and what the gospel was. And at the end of his letter, which is a little bit different than American letters, he sent a letter to specific people. When we address a letter, we say to 
Brad at the top of the letter, and then we write our letter. But what Paul did is at the end of his letter, he sends his greetings to all the people that are in the church at Rome, and he mentions them by name. Because what Paul is doing is he's saying, look, you're a community. You are a community of faith. And that's what our series has been about, is the, the, that we would be a place of grace, a place of grace where we have the power to become a community of the Spirit. So that's what Paul is working on. So I want you to join me in the YouVersion app. You can check that out, um, YouVersion, in the, in the app store, and then click on events in there, and you can see scripture and all of the details for today. So now let's get into it. Romans chapter 13, verse 10 is our theme verse, and I want to invite you to read that theme verse with me. Romans chapter 13, verse 10. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And this is the big idea for today. You are beloved. You are a beloved child of God. That's what Paul is communicating to the church in Rome. I'm sorry I can't be with you, he says. I want to come see you. But listen, you're beloved. And we're going to look at three ways that the beloved express themselves within that power that transformed community of power. So the first thing we're going to look at is going to come from Romans chapter 16, verses 1 through 5. And Pastor Lori is going to read that for us. Yes. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at Centrea, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need for you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risked their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epeonetus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Lori. Now, what did you notice about that? What did you notice about all these words? This is just Paul summing up Uh, who he's writing to, and notice what that screen was filled with. It was filled with a lot of interesting things, but first of all, it was filled with names. And I want to pray. I want to pray as we begin this time so that we can um, allow the Holy Spirit and welcome him, invite him to speak to us um, from these greetings to other people. Now, I didn't see Brad in there, but I know that my name's among those saints that are in this roll call in Romans chapter 16. So let's pray. Father, I ask you to speak commendation, to speak blessing, to speak to your beloved today. Lord, fill them with your spirit. And I pray that these three message points that we have today would ring true in our hearts and that you would call us to be your beloved, that we will walk in your power, experience your community, and grow in faith through this message today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So let me share with you what point number one is in this big idea of you being loved, you being beloved Number one, God knows your name. God knows your name. This is the message that Paul was sharing with the church. In this passage, he says each of the people's names. He named them. Yeah, you know what's so amazing to this about is that, you know, we spend so much time when we're about to have a baby or when we're meeting someone to know their name. And names are so important. Like, it really made me go back and think, wow, like, it is really important that we know each other's name and like when we're choosing our child's name, like that we spend so much time and it's a really important thing. Yeah, and even before the child's born, parents choose a name. They're, they agonize over it. They make long lists so they can decide uh, what sort of prayers they want to pray, what sort of image they want this child yeah, to have. Yeah, you even had Naomi's name picked before we were even married. So yeah, that's you true. thought about it a yeah. really long time. I, I think that was one of the arrangements that we made during the engagement, <laughs> that if we were going to get married, yes. you'd have to be okay with That's Naomi. Okay. I like the name Naomi too. And the reason is, is because my mother's name is Ruth. And so that had very specific meaning. And God has you named. He knows your name. He knows your background. He knows your story. And some ways that this came out in the passage is really interesting, is if you read this, you'll actually notice that there are male and female listed among the roll call of the saints in chapter 16. Another thing that you may not pick up on reading it in English is in this list, there are names that come from a variety of ethnic and cultural backgrounds. So there's Jewish names, there are Greek names, and there are Roman Latin names. 
And so Paul, by listing all of these believers together, is saying, hey, look, you're all one. You're all one people. You're all part of that community of faith. And even though some of you have Jewish names, some of you are male, some of you are female, some of you are Greek, some of you are Roman, individually, you all make up this community of the faith. And that's why I love seeing that people are commenting in the sections below and that your names are popping up. Yeah, we are. know who's talking. And, and I see in there that some of you are commenting on each other as you're replying to one another and tagging them and sharing the gospel and sharing encouragement and telling them that you miss them. And how special is that? That we all together are one body, male and female, Greek, Gentile, Jew, African, Puerto Rican, uh, Guatemalan, American, Canadian, Hawaiian, we all are one body of Christ, whatever our name is. Now, there's something else hidden in this list of names that you probably wouldn't pick up on. Some of these names are royal nobility. These are the leaders of the Jewish community, leaders in Rome, and leaders among the Greeks. And you go, oh, well, that's pretty cool. You know, Paul's writing to the, to the upper class, but that isn't it. Right next to some of those names of royalty are the names of servants the names of workers, the names of slaves. And so even in this list, it's not just male, female, and race racially coming together or culturally coming together, but it's also upper class and lower class. The wealthy and the poor are one part of the body of Christ. And God knows each of your names. Pretty incredible. Okay, so would you like to hear some of these middle names? Yeah, ooh, up? do we got some good yeah, middle names? Do. Okay, I'm so ready for this. So Adeline Rose Lynn was named after Grandma Sherry. Hey, and she loves Adeline, I love that. Our daughters, yeah. we have two of our daughters. One of them's middle name is Rose and another one is Lynn. We have Gabriel Isaiah and Naomi Leah. And both of those have heart emojis next to them, so that's pretty cool. Okay, Isaiah and Leah, those are both Bible middle names. Yep. So thanks for sharing Laura's that. And then Laura's middle name is Kay, just like her mom. Uh -huh. So that's pretty sweet. And Very Sandy good. Hutchison's middle name is Kay as well. So that's pretty cool. Bethany's middle name is Sarah after her grandma. There's lots of cool things. Tons. Middle name of Gordon Schaefer's Paul. Lots of people have been responding. Okay, Leilani uh, Lou. I love that, Leilani. <laughs> Leilani awesome. Lou, like Cindy Lou. Ivan Paul, yeah. Yeah. Um, any interesting emojis that people shared of how they feel about their middle names? Do people like them? Or? Uh, Janet Van Cleve said Lynn, and she gave a little winking emoji. A so wink. that's pretty cool. That's awesome. <laughs> Big smiles for uh, Dina Ullincott to Bethany's response. So that's fun. Thanks okay. for interacting with each other. You yeah, guys. that's great. I was expecting maybe like the green pukey face, like about middle names. I haven't names. seen any of no, those yet. None of those or like no. a head exploding because <laughs> no. people don't. Oh, good wow. emojis so far. Well, good job, parents. You gave your kids some uh, acceptable middle names, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty good. All right. So point number one this morning is that God knows your name. And thank you for sharing your names. Now we're going to head to point number two, and Pastor Lori's going to read. But point number two for today is God knows your work. God knows the work that you do. So notice as Pastor Lori's reading that it isn't just the names that are listed, but it's also the things that these people have done that are listed. So let's read this together from Romans chapter 16. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphana and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Persis who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. That's awesome. So did you notice that there, among those names were also characteristics about those people? They're almost like nicknames. Mm-hmm. So you've already shared some middle names with us, and we also want you to share something else. What is the next thing? Next gonna... thing is your a nickname that you have. And tell us maybe how you got the nickname. So, I mean, a common nickname for me is teacher, teacher, because oh, that's what yeah. I do, and I've had that forever. But And um, I, I know that I've been in your classroom visiting sometimes, and I've heard some kids call you mom. I know. That happens <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> I, I'm with them almost more than their parents are. But think of a nickname that you have, and it could be a silly nickname. Maybe it's a really meaningful nickname that you have. Post it in the comments and tell us how you got that nickname. 
And I would also like to, if some of you are brave, for you to share with us your childhood nickname. Mm. And if somebody does it, if somebody shares an embarrassing childhood nickname, then I will share one of my embarrassing child nicknames in just a few minutes. Okay. But we're going to wait to see if any come in on the comments. So what are the nicknames that are appear in this passage? And you can go all the way back to verse 1 of chapter 16. And I just highlighted a few. But what Paul said is that some of these believers, some of these beloved, who he names by name, that they worked hard for the church in Rome. Now, one of the things we know is that the people who are named, Paul names them in other books in the New Testament. And they're also mentioned in the book of Acts because they came from other cities. So what we learn by their names being included in the book of Romans is that these believers traveled from other cities in the Roman Empire and came to Rome to help build the church. And we learned last week that Paul had never even been to Rome. So this church that was growing and thriving in Rome was because of other people's labor. Among them are Priscilla and Aquila, uh, the husband and wife duo. One is a Roman, one is a Jew, and uh, one was upper class, one was lower class, and they got married and became real leaders in the church in the first century. And Paul greets them in Rome, but also mentions them being part of the family of Christ in Ephesus. And so I have to imagine that that's what Paul's talking about, is that these believers came to Rome and worked hard, gave of their own money and finances to travel to another place to promote the gospel. And some other ways that he gives nicknames to these people is he says the chosen one, or he mentions them as the beloved, or he mentions that they were people who helped travelers. So he mentions those who traveled, but then there are hosts in Rome who likely made their home open in hospitality for those who were traveling and let them live with them and provided meals and um, a place to stay. Now, there's another interesting expression in Romans chapter 16 where Paul says that they put their necks on the line for him. That's what it says in the English. But if you could understand this in the original uh, language, what it means is they put their head on the chopping block for him. And you may just look at that in American culture and go, oh, that's an interesting metaphor that someone would put their head on the chopping block for them. Um, but it also is very possible that these people literally gave their life or almost gave their life in martyrdom for the gospel. These were people who were beaten, who were stoned. Paul himself was beaten close to death a number of times. And so he also mentions that among these believers by name, that some of them were fellow prisoners with him. And so look at those nicknames, neck on the line, chosen, hard worker, helper of others, risking their necks, fellow prisoners. And you know, Jesus has a special calling for each one of us. He has a special recognition of not only our name, but he knows who we are and he knows what we're about. It makes me think of John chapter one when he's calling the disciples and he first calls Philip who has a brother Nathaniel and Philip goes to his brother Nathaniel and says, you got to come meet this teacher. His name's Jesus. Come check him out. And when Nathaniel approaches Jesus, Jesus says, oh, here is a Jewish man who has no deceit in him. I mean, Jesus just calls Nathaniel out. They've never met. They've never had a conversation. And Jesus knows who Nathaniel is. And he gave him a nickname, the man without deceit. Now, I don't know what your reaction would be if Jesus said something like that to you. I'd be pretty honored. And so was Nathaniel. Nathaniel said, Rabbi, how do you know me? And Jesus said, before your brother Philip came to get you, I saw you sitting under the fig tree. And Nathaniel responded to that message from Jesus by saying, you must be my savior. You must be the Lord, because how would you know that I was sitting under the fig tree? Now, we don't know the backstory on why Nathaniel was under a fig tree, but Nathaniel knew. He was sitting under a tree, likely in some meditation or prayer. He was calling out to God, and God heard him. And when his brother Philip came and brought him to Jesus, Jesus knew what Nathaniel was about. So God sees your needs. He sees what you're about. And whether you're sitting under a fig tree this morning, watching this stream on a tablet or YouTube, maybe you're, or not YouTube, we're not streaming to YouTube. Not yet. Tablet or phone, <laughs> that's what I meant to say. God sees you. He sees you just like he saw Nathaniel, and he's calling out your name, and he knows your deeds. So did we get any nicknames? We did. We got a lot. So 
Adeline calls Tyler Tygo, which is pretty fun. And, and Tawny's that's fun. dad called her Louise, and she has no idea why. So that's a pretty interesting story. <laughs> Tawny uh, Louise. Age short Louise. for Adrienne. Her school buddies gave it to her. There's your, so we uh, have to hear your story in a minute. Adrienne, that's not yep. very AIDS. That's okay, just like. here's one. Ads. Gordon Schaefer. His was Gus after the little mouse in Cinderella. Oh, that's, that's nice, so Gordon. <laughs> Gus. So we have Sam, yeah, who's it. now named as Smam. Thanks, you, Talia Murphy. Yeah. Smam. <laughs> Charlotte is that like Charlotte. yes, ma'am? That must be like Smam. yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. How awesome! Lots and lots of nicknames on here. Pretty funny. All right. So since some of you shared some fun nicknames, I guess that I'll share with uh, share mine with you. So when I was in high school, I was a sophomore, and at my high school, that was your first year of high school because freshmen were actually in the junior high. So my first year of high school. Um, I really loved getting a grape soda from the soda machine during lunch. And so I'd eat my lunch, and on the way to my next period after lunch, I would grab a grape soda out of the soda machine. And um, I had one every day. I really enjoyed it. It wasn't a big deal. But I later found out, and then kids started to call me grape after maybe two or three weeks of doing this. And so the seniors gave me this nickname, and behind my back they would say grape. And that's what they so called me. So, yeah, crazy. but then eventually they started calling me that to my face. And then another crazy nickname I had in school, and I didn't tell Lori I was going to share this one, but you guys were so generous, I thought I'd pass this along, is they would cause, call me Fozzie Bear. Fozzie Bear. I think yeah. I knew that, actually. <clears throat> Do you yeah. know why they called me Fozzie Bear? No. Do you remember what my hair was like when you first met yes, me? Yes, it was curly mullet. I'll have to, maybe I can post a picture later on. Yeah. And so because of my curly mullet, the kids called me Fozzie. That's pretty funny. Yeah, that was my nickname. So <laughs> thank you for sharing yours. That was really kind of you. And what do those nicknames tell us? <clears throat> those nicknames tell us that somebody loves us, that they notice us, <clears throat> that they see our works. They see me picking up a grape soda, and they recognize that every day I have a grape soda. They look at me, and they see that I have curly hair, and it reminds them of Fozzie Bear. And so they call you Fozzie. And in the same way, Paul and our Heavenly Father noticed these believers at the church in Rome, and he called them out, not just by name, but by their works, by the things that they did. And so I just want to encourage you, church. We're in social isolation, but God sees you. He knows your name, and he knows your works. Those random acts of kindness, the fact that you didn't buy both packs of toilet paper, you only bought one, God saw that. And he knows that you were generous. And you may have saw another cart filled with 10 of them and thought, oh, I should have taken both. But God knows. And he saw your work and he sees what you're doing now. He sees the kind messages that you're sharing in the comments below. And he wants to encourage you. He wants to commend you because you are the beloved of God. He knows you by name and he knows your works. And that brings us to our final point. Yep. Our final point this morning is that because God knows our name and our works, he is calling us to be like Paul and to commend others, to commend the name and the work of others. So we're going to look at Romans chapter 16, verses 14 through 16, and see what Paul has to say about commending one another. Greet Asyncretus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet, Philo greet Philogagus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. You may kiss your neighbor. Nope. What? <laughs> you can't? Paul, six feet apart, air kiss. Okay, so you're going to have to do a social distancing holy kiss. So maybe blow a kiss to someone. <laughs> uh, so if any of you kids want to blow a kiss to me or Pastor Lori, go ahead. Um, greet each other with a holy kiss. Now, of course, because you're a household, maybe you could greet one another in your home. Um, but with social distancing, we can't greet each other with a holy kiss. And if you go back through this entire passage, 1 through 16, you'll see that over and over again, Paul says, greet so-and-so, greet them, greet them, greet them. And he just is pouring out encouragement and honor upon the names and the work of all these people. And so here's what we're asking you to do, what the Holy Spirit is asking you to do. We want you to become a commender, someone who commends others, who names them and calls them out by name and tells them how they've been a blessing in your life. So what we're asking you to do this week is to notice other people and to greet them. 
to think, thank them for the work that they've done, to build them up, to encourage them and say, thank you for being in prison with me. Thank you for putting your neck out on the line for me and look for a way to do that specifically and call people out. So what do so we want to have So here's an do? idea. In the comments bar, you're able to tag someone. So try doing that. Pick one or two or 10 people that you could tag and say, give them a, a just a, a shout out to thankfulness or how they've helped you um, and tag those two people and then maybe we'll start this big movement of tagging and commending people. That Wouldn't that be, be really awesome? Cool. During yeah. this time of isolation, if all of a sudden there was a group of people, I mean, I just can imagine there, I don't know how many are watching the stream. What do we have on there? We have 50 people watching right now. So if each one of us does two tags, that would be a hundred people who would receive a word of encouragement and all you have to do is share two. Yeah, someone in the church, someone outside the church. Yeah, and if you're tagging someone from outside the church, they may be super curious as to what's happening with the live stream. So that would be an awesome way to then encourage them even more. Yeah, maybe they'll come back and watch this live stream and hear that God loves them, that he sees them sitting under the fig tree and that he called them <clears throat> by name. So what if somebody wants to tag more than two people? Go for it. Do 10, do 100. 10? Just make sure that you're spending the time to really genuinely give them that comment that you have for them. Yeah, let's make it something sincere and really heartfelt about how they have ministered to you in a personal way yeah. and really touched your life and been there for you. These are gonna be the comments that are incredible <clears throat> on this yeah. post. Yeah. yeah, those emojis were fun. It was nice to hear your nicknames, but this is really gonna be meaningful if we take a moment to tag and share some love with other people. So here's what we're gonna do. As we close this service, we wanna pray. So would you join me in prayer? There's three prayer topics that we're gonna put up on the screen. I think they're there now. And we want you to pray for each one of them. The first thing is I wanna invite you to pray for people by name. Maybe those two people that you tagged in the comments below, go to Heavenly Father and just begin to call out to him. Pray in Jesus' name that the Holy Spirit would touch them by name. And if you know their middle name, pray their middle name and pray for them by name. And then secondly, would you pray for the workers in ministry? Right now, this morning, and all around America and the world, there are Christian leaders who are trying to get the gospel message out, even though they can't have small groups, they can't have uh, church services. And so we're doing it through technology, through social media, um, through telephone calls and letters. And um, would you pray for us? Uh, you may have noticed this morning that during our time of worship that Pastor Laura wasn't with us, and we miss her. The reason she's not with us is she's feeling under the weather. She woke up yesterday with a little bit of a cough and she doesn't have a fever yet that I know of, but she isn't feeling good. And there's other Christian leaders, there's church leaders, the AGWM, Director of Assemblies of God World Missions, has coronavirus and so does his wife. And they're both fighting for their lives in a hospital in Missouri. And so would you pray for them? There's others that you know, people who have ministered to you that have brought the gospel to you would you pray for them during this season that they would be filled with the Spirit and able to minister? And then number three, the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to pray for opportunities to connect other people to the gospel. Pray for opportunities to commend them in the Spirit, to share good news with them. You're doing it in the comment section now, but maybe you can pray for opportunities later this week so that they can... Um, so that you, I mean, can share an encouraging word to people that you meet uh, in the little bit of interaction that you have throughout the week. So will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Father, we ask for your presence to be with us now. Holy Spirit, that you would intercede for us, that you would come alongside us and pray prayers of groaning that are too deep for words. Father, we wanna pray specifically for people by name people in our life that we've tagged in the comments, the ones who have ministered to us, Lord, that you would protect them, that you would lead them, that you would cause them not to fall sick to this coronavirus or any other sickness, that you would provide for the workers of ministry who are putting their necks on the line, who are putting themselves at risk, who are serving and ministering in a way that is good for us, hard work, traveling and doing the work of ministry to build us up. And Lord, finally, we pray for opportunities this week where we can be a commender, where we can share encouragement to someone else and thank them and greet them by name for the work that they have done for us. Jesus, we trust you and we give you ourselves. We give you this work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, this week our worship team has worked really hard to bring you a new song. 
The song was just recently written. It was a Holy Spirit moment in the office of a church when Hillsong uh, Worship was performing at Elevation Church. While they were there, the pastors and the worship leaders got together and they began to write a song. This song is called The Blessing, and it's a song whose words come straight out of scripture. And our worship team wants to lead this song and pray it over you as they sing. And so I want to invite you to receive this blessing. The message today was that you are loved, that God knows you by name, that he sees you and he knows your work. And so this song is a song of blessing. It's a song of prayer that says that the Lord shines his face on you. He gives you peace. And so as the worship team leads us in this beautiful song, would you just receive today's blessing from them as if you were right here in the room. God bless you. Enjoy the blessing. Friends, thank you so much for participating in Eagle Life Church Church at Home today. We want to keep interacting with you, so make sure you like our page, Eagle Life Church, on Facebook or follow us on Instagram at Eagle Life Church. The kids are going to be joining Mrs. Williams over on Marco Polo in just a minute. We hope that today's 
Church at Home helped you experience Jesus in a life-changing way.